Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Yes, uh, good evening. I'm just going to be here for about 20 minutes, not too long. I hope you're all fine and I hope you've had a productive day. And I hope you're having a productive week so far. Uh, and I hope you're sticking around with uh, or surrounding yourself with people that add value to your life than uh, to pull you down. Now, I'm here to talk about this kafafa that has been going on uh, between the government and the Catholic Church, which I feel hopefully might decline shortly because of the pushback that it has uh, attracted or generated from people like me and others who mean well for Zambia. I'm actually trying, by saying what I'm saying, I'm actually trying to help the Catholic Church. Not that they need my help or that they have asked for it, but I'm giving them the proper advice and guidance. Not that there's anything special about me. That's an establishment that has been there for many years, centuries, but establishments do mess up. Just like political parties, uh, large religious institutions can go in the wrong direction. How about tomorrow morning, the Catholic Church goes on the pulpit and congratul congratulates the president for the reduction in fuel prices, the price of petrol, for example, going down from 27 kwacha 59 ingwe to 24 kwacha 45 ingwe. That's quite a decline in the price of petrol. The price of diesel has also gone down. So if the price of fuel goes down, that does tend to help commodity prices, doesn't it? It's a chain reaction, isn't it? If the price of fuel goes up, everything goes up. If the price of fuel goes down, everything goes down. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I know these prices are fluctuate. They are always fluctuating. They are not permanent. But this is positive news, if not for a day, at least for a week, or for however long it lasts. How about if the Catholic Church is truly being sincere and not being political? How about they go on the pulpit tomorrow and issue a statement to say, congratulations, Mr. President. We heard that the price of fuel has gone down. You see why, you see why I'm saying the church shouldn't get involved in politics? It divides people. It's divisive. Okay? You can't be a religious institution that has so many followers in the Republic, but in a hurry to stand on the pulpit and talk negatively against a sitting government, but not say positive things. Then it begs the question, are you being sincere? Are you being honest? Are you being genuine? Or are you being political? When I say the church should stay in its lane, I am not trying to say the church does not care for people or should not have zero voice. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, I know, and any right-thinking Zambian should know, that every time a church dives into divisive politics, it makes the church dirty. It opens the church up to all sorts of insults, ridicule. It exposes the dirt within the church body itself because the churches themselves are not clean. They have their own issues within their church bodies. Issues that still need to be taken care of. So why would a religious institution as powerful and influential as the Catholic Church dive into Zambia's divisive politics at a time when really what we should be preaching is unity? political unity, tribal unity, and a focus on getting Zambians out of poverty. The question is, how do you get Zambians out of poverty? You get Zambians out of poverty through dialogue, 
through being sincere, through preaching unity, through finding more productive and diplomatic ways of reaching out to the government and saying, let's work together as partners to promote this program or that program. But to stand on a pulpit and indict a sitting government just because there's reference to graphs and to say Zambians are only interested in a lamp of Unshima, poor Zambians. I, I, I disagree that graphs are irrelevant. Everyone in Zambia, every adult must have an idea of what a basic graph uh, illustrates. Our mothers, both educated and uneducated in the urban and rural areas of Zambia, are shown graphs at the under five clinic. So we can understand graphs. We can't just be a country that just sits back and says, graphs are irrelevant, we don't understand graphs, we're only interested in the lamp of Nishima. I find that insulting. It is not true that the adult Zambian is only preoccupied with the lamp of Nishima. That is not true. If that were true, we would not have attained independence in 1964. What is needed is a realization that there is a lot of poverty in Zambia and we must get out of poverty. But even as we try to get out of poverty, there has to be a concerted effort among Zambians. There has to be application towards getting out of poverty. But you certainly won't get out of poverty by sitting back and saying we can't eat graphs. Graphs are there to explain. They're a snapshot of a situation prevailing in the past, present and trends for the future. It is important to have an overall idea of why we are in the situation that we are in right now. What has worked in the past, what has not worked, what regimes were successful, what regimes were unsuccessful, an overall idea, an overall snapshot. We have to know where we've been, where we are and where we're going. A graph is a snapshot of all that. Now we're not talking about a complicated graph that only economists can understand. We're talking about a basic graph that illustrates to the Zambians what the Zambian situation is. Now, if we take the time to explain this, any Zambian adult, educated or uneducated, can understand what the graph is saying, especially if it's color-coded. But a graph does not give the whole picture, and it does not explain everything. It just illustrates. It's just a snapshot. But through explaining, if we take the time to explain to Zambians on the ground, including poor Zambians, it is helpful because we can't dismiss knowledge. We can't dismiss information and think that we can get out of poverty. Even as we fight for our survival needs, food, clean water, shelter, security, clothing, you know, even as we do that, we still need the knowledge. Okay, We can't be dismissive of everything. We can't be critical of everything. We can't stand on the pulpit and indict a sitting government just because a graph was shown. That's being petty. That's not being sincere. That is being divisive. Zambia is already divided. And you know, Zambian politics are so divided and there is a tribal tinge to this division. The last thing we need is a religious institution such as the Catholic Church diving into that. The church should be focused more on preaching harmony, reconciliation, dialogue, social justice. They should promote the legal system. They should reach out to government and work with government and work with the opposition. They should heal the wounds that are out there. But they should not dive into divisive politics. There is a lot of politicking going on. There is a lot of tribalism going on in our politics. The church should be above that. The church should work with people like me and many others to overcome tribalism in this country because it has a strangulating effect on this country. So it's not wise for the church to dive into active politics or divisive politics rather. And parties like the PF are using you to do that, and you're allowing yourselves to be used, and that's a pity. When uh, <clears throat> in uh, 2000, or was it 2000, uh, 2001, at the height of the third term debate when President, uh, late former President 
uh, F.T. Jechima was trying to run for a third term. He had come in as a Democrat, committed to two terms of office to serve. The country was committed to that. Suddenly, towards the end of his administration, he was trying to change the rules so that he could change the constitution to enable him to run for a third term. And we were experiencing a lot of economic turmoil at that time. And I remember talking, uh, because look, um, I come from a Catholic background. I was baptized by the Catholic Church. My family is Catholic. I'm, that's out of tradition, okay? Uh, though I'm not a practicing Catholic, uh, but I was born in the Catholic Church and my family is Catholic, like so many families in Zambia. Uh, the Catholics, you know, we have had situation where uh, Zambians have gone through Catholic schools, gone to clinics operated by Catholics. So Catholics have been very influential to millions of Zambians. So I'm one of those. Uh, and so, yeah, when President Chua was trying to run for a third term, I was only about 20 years old. And I remember talking to a few uh, officials of the Catholic Church, uh, not a few of them, Zambians, uh, about this terrible situation that Zambia was potentially about to go through, uh, adulteration of the constitution to allow a third term. And I told the officials, the junior officials in the Catholic Church, because the two powerful, most powerful people running the church, Pastor Francis in McKinney, were Polish. Okay, the chief guy, I don't know if you can call him the father or the priest, was a Polish, the deputy was a Polish, well, the, the rest were Zambians. So I was talking to the few Zambians. I said, look, I need to find a way of getting on that stage and telling the audience that they cannot support this third term bid. Uh, I mean, there was a lot of activity, even among religious institutions. There was division there at that time, with some of them saying they can't allow the third term bid, and the others saying they will allow the third term bid. And there were these rumors of brown envelopes circulating, and the, we were expecting religious leaders, even in the Pentecostal movement, to come out against the third term bid because it was not right. It's changing the goalposts uh, at the last minute. And religious leaders, especially in the Pentecostal movement at that time, who we were expecting to come out in the open and to take a stand to say this is wrong, kept quiet. And... So we are hearing these rumors of brown envelopes circulating and religious leaders who were looking up to, to say something and try and influence the government against the third term bid. Prominent religious leaders who we had been seeing on TV, had large audiences, were quiet. So since I was going to the Catholic Church, Pastor Francis in Makeni, I spoke to someone there. I said, look, I need to stand in front of people and say, this is wrong and we can't support this in our country. Up to today, I don't know how uh, this official allowed me. I think his name was Mr. Muranga. He said, just go there before the sermon starts, before the father starts to conduct his service. Go there and say what you have to say. <laughs> and I did that. There was the service in vernacular and there was a service in English. I did it for both services. And I also made sure that uh, the, the Polish father knew that I was going to go there. He didn't ask me to go in. He didn't tell, ask too many details of what I was going to say. But I think he just his idea was just keep it general, short and brief. I think he, he didn't give me too many conditions anyway. But I went there. I stood in front of people and I said, we can't support the third term bid. I was, uh, I said it was wrong. And I said, as Zambians, we must reject that. And I did it for both English and vernacular sermons. And uh, I think what happened was, because that's politics, and in retrospect, like I'm saying, uh, it's not a good idea to mix politics and church. Uh, the speech that I made in the Catholic Church advising Zambians 
to uh, resist the third term debate. Remember, there was uh, honking in the streets to show resistance of the third term debate. There was the green ribbon campaign that you had to wear to show that you were resistant to the third term debate. I mean, the atmosphere was there. So anyway, I gave my speech in the church that day. And what happened after that was there was a lot of uh, pushback uh, from some of the people in the audience. I mean, that was after the speech. During the speech, everybody clapped, everybody cheered, and so on and so forth. But not everybody was against the third term debate, apparently. Or, uh, out of principle, they just felt that that was not the right platform to bring politics into the church. So what happened was the Polish uh, priest or father and his team uh, received a lot of criticism for allowing me to come on that platform to make that speech. Uh, not everybody criticized. I think most people supported what I did coming on the platform, Percent Francis in McKinney, to make that speech. A lot of people were happy. They agreed that the third term debate was wrong, but there were a few people within the church body who said it was not right for me to be allowed. And indeed, the church apologized uh, that I they apologized the following Sunday for allowing me to have made that speech. I mean, it was in reaction to the pressure. And remember, at that time, uh, political intolerance had reached an all-time high. People were getting kind of violent, cutters and things like that. So I think the Polish priest uh, felt that maybe it was wise to make an apology uh, for having allowed me to make that speech. I ended up, as a result, going to the office of the Polish uh, priest just to get a sense of what was going on. And... Uh, he explained to me that maybe it wasn't a good idea. Uh, but he also asked me who allowed me to come on the platform. As though he didn't know that uh, I was going to go on the platform. He himself knew, but I think he got scared. You know, being Polish, height of the third term debate, people are getting angry and who knows. There maybe someone from intelligence might be in the, in the audience. <clears throat> so he was scared, I guess. So I think he was trying to distance himself from it, and he asked me who had allowed me to make that speech. I said, I'm not going to tell you who allowed me to, you know. I'm not going to say, Bam Vanga is the one who allowed me to go. So I told him, I said, <clears throat> because I didn't want the Polish priest to use any of the Zambian uh, officials in the Catholic Church as a scapegoat in case it was heading in that direction. So I told the Polish priest, I said, uh, none of your officials... None of your officials allowed me to go on that platform. I went there myself. So that's why I told him. I said, uh, if you are looking for me to tell you who allowed me to go on the platform, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you who told me who allowed me to go on the platform. What I'm going to tell you is that I went there by, by myself and I made the speech by myself. So it ended at that. And uh, But the principle was that, or the principle that the Polish uh, preacher or the Polish priest used was that uh, we cannot mix uh, politics with church. And he said he talked about a history in his home country uh, in Poland where politics had been injected into the Catholic Church with very serious consequences. Very serious consequences. I think uh, there must have been some fighting and people died. So I get that. So that was in the year 2000 which is all 23 years ago, 22, 23 years ago. I can't remember if the, the year when I made that speech was in 2000 or 2001. It was probably 2001. <clears throat> so we're talking about some 22 years ago. Now, 22 years later, what has changed in the Catholic Church? Because now the Catholic Church is saying the opposite. They're insisting that the church plays a role in politics. 22 years ago, the Polish priest and his Polish deputy went on that stage and apologized for that political speech I made in the Catholic Church. They said we can't mix politics with church. So this is 22 years later. And my question to the Catholic Church is, has the Catholic doctrine changed? Because now you're insisting that the Catholic Church, it's okay for them to be involved in politics. So I need clarification. <clears throat> Has the doctrine changed? Because even after I made the speech, our father of Mvanga, who was an official, 
or an assistant within the Catholic Church expressed frustration on why they had to apologize. Because indeed it was true that Zambians did not want a third term. He expressed frustration. He said, why did this, why did they have to apologize? The speech was done in the right spirit. Anyway, has the doctrine changed? The Catholic have to answer that question. And if it has changed, does that mean the Catholic Church can now actively take sides on which political party they want to support? So, example, in the Zambian situation, can they say, oh, we support PF, we don't support UPND? If that is the case, let them come out in the open and make it clear. But what is wrong is to come as a man of the cloth and to come on the pulpit in the name of speaking for the poor, and yet there is a political tinge to your activity. That is wrong. That is manipulative. That is deceptive. And that should be discouraged. The people are open to manipulation. People are just people. They are open to manipulation. They are open to all sorts of political manipulation. They are open to all sorts of tribal manipulation. They are open to all sorts of religious manipulation. People are open. They are open. Okay? Now the question here becomes, do we allow, allow our leaders to take advantage of that? Since Zambia is a breeding ground, breeding ground for all sorts of Jim and Jacks, genuine and false prophets, playing around, coming in Zambia, in and out, and within Zambia. And people are receptive to that, including false prophets. Since Zambia is a breeding ground, and our people are open to all sorts of deception and manipulation, should we allow our leaders to take advantage of that? And they do. And that has been the case ever since Zambia was declared a Christian nation. You would think that we should drift more towards Christian values, but if you pay close attention, you will find that since that declaration over 30 years ago, if anything, we have drifted further away from Christian values. And we have opened ourselves to all sorts of manipulation and false prophets and false leaders claiming to represent the poor when in fact they have their own selfish political agenda. So, since we are an open ground to all sorts of manipulation, it is up to social media influencers and other political leaders and civic leaders to counteract that. Because if we don't step in and put these people in check, they have no ability to self-regulate. If the Catholic Church can dig and dig deeper and deeper and more into Zambian politics, they will. They will not be able to restrain themselves to say, no, no, this is where we draw the line. No, if they find that they can get more power by diving more into divisive politics, they will. The problem with that is it will end in tears for many Zambians and we won't be able to get out of poverty. We will lose focus and it now becomes a game. It's no longer about salvation. It's no longer about redemption. It's about money and power and greed. And that's a disaster. So that's where people like me come in. And I'm also going to end by saying this. It is important for people to understand that I'm not here for page numbers to grow. I'm not interested in that, number one. You must understand that, okay? I'm not interested in this page having high numbers. If it does, if more people come to this page, well and good, but that's not my objective and that's not my priority. This is a page for knowledge. Most of my topics you'll find will be boring to you and a lot of you will tune out because I'm not here to talk every day about this dirty politics. I want to talk about it sometimes. I'll dive into it when I feel that it's really important, but really, this is a page for knowledge. Number two, it is very important for people to understand. I see the page numbers have grown a lot this past week. You must understand that I am not a defender of the president. I am not a member of UPND, and I've never been a member of UPND, and I'll never be a member of UPND. But I stand for fairness in what is right. And if I smell a concerted partisan effort between the PF government and the Catholic Church to bring down the current government or to discredit the current government unfairly because they don't like, for instance, the president's tribe, I can't, I can't accept that type of behavior. You'll find me running 
to defend the president. I will defend the president because I don't want wickedness to pervert this country. I don't want tribalism to pervert this country. So let's just be honest and sincere in what we are doing. I've, I've had a difficult relationship with press singers. In fact, I don't like press singers that much. We've fought on this page, you've all seen. Because of my middle ground position, I call a spade a spade. When the president is right, I say he's right. And when he's wrong, I've been harsh in my criticisms. But if I feel that he's being, he's being treated unfairly or there's some tribalism or concerted effort to discredit him without giving him a proper chance to govern, I'll run in his defense. I'll defend him because I don't support wickedness. I don't support wickedness. you still see me criticize the president. So I'm warning you, press singers, there'll be days when you'll be angry with me because I've been harsh against the president, but I try to do it fairly and where it's due. And when he's right about something, I give him credit for that. My job is to be in the middle, to provide the objective assessment, and to be fair, to call a sped a sped. Thank you for watching. It's time for news. Go and watch ZNBC. I have to cut it here. It's now 19 hours Zambian time. See you tomorrow. Have a blessed night. Take care and thank you for watching. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.